Hey guys, it's Bear. It is Tuesday, March 31st, 2020, and March 31st every year is the Trans Day of Visibility. So, some questions got circulated on Facebook, um, urging Facebook friends to ask certain questions, and I felt like it was a good reason to sit down and do a video. I haven't done a video in a really long time because first I was really busy, then the coronavirus quarantine thing happened and I was like, well, it's a great time to do a video, but I don't have any motivation to do so. And then this list went around and I thought, okay, there's your motivation to do a video. So hi, welcome back. It's been at least two months since I've done a video and I'm sorry about that. For people that know me, you know that I've, I've been very, very busy. So yeah, uh, the list of questions, a lot of them are really related a couple of them aren't a couple of them have longer answers so i might just tackle them in a different video but getting right into it number 13 on the list what has surprised you most about transitioning quite frankly white male privilege and i did an outspoken piece about that that you can find on my youtube channel there has been a surprising difference in the way people interact with you publicly I don't worry about is that person going to try to take advantage of me in some way? Are they going to catcall me in some way? That hasn't happened to me in five and a half years since I started my transition. I have not been catcalled once. You're, I'm no longer afraid to walk down the street and worry about everything. One of the first experiences I had with that, I had accidentally followed a woman down the street like I left the same train car as her and was just walking to my car walking in the same direction as her and I happened to be a fair amount of space behind her but I was still going the same exact way as her and I made her nervous and I realized like she thinks that I'm a guy which I am but she furthermore thinks that I'm following her and I it was a really bizarre feeling where first I was like, oh my god, I'm passing, because it was really early in my transition. I was still binding, and facial hair hadn't come in, stuff like that. So first I was like, oh, I'm passing, it's, it's working. And then I was like, oh no, that's not me, I'm not that guy, and I know how you feel. And like I wanted to, I wanted to tell her that, but there was no way to safely do so without making her feel more uncomfortable. And so I just, I crossed the street to give her some space. But um, I could go on and on about about that very easily. There's a lot of, of difference in the way men and women are treated. It's sad. And that has been the most surprising thing. Uh, number two, how long have you known? Uh, this is a complicated question because I, we didn't know in the 80s what trans was, but as far back as I can really remember knowing the difference between boys and girls, I always felt like male-oriented. I always felt like one of the boys. I always played more with the boys, and I remember people asking me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say, a boy. Because I really did think with that kind of childlike innocence, I really thought that that's what that meant. They weren't asking me, like, do you want to be a doctor or whatever? They were asking me, what do you want to grow up to be? And I thought that you could grow up to be male or female. Um, and I talked about that in an outspoken piece that I will link to this video. So how long have you known as far back as I can remember? It's just that I didn't know the word for it. And had I known the word for it, like kids do now, or parents are more educated about it now, um, I feel like I would have probably socially transitioned. Which leads me to the next question. Uh, how do you think your life would be different if you could have transitioned earlier? I think it would have been significantly different. Um, I... Gosh, it's a complicated question. I think it would have been significantly different because I would have grown up without the questioning, without the angst that comes with not fitting in and not knowing why you don't fit in or feeling like you're a freak, that wouldn't have happened. But on the other hand, I wouldn't have had those female experiences that led me to be what I think is a more sensitive male. I think that I, I or at least I try to use my white male privilege to listen to people 
who don't have that privilege, including women, including people of color, I try to, to listen to their experiences and alter my behavior accordingly. And I try to use my voice as an extrovert, as somebody who likes to go out and talk to people, I try to use my voice to educate people on how they are u using privilege that they don't think they have and, and to try to, to educate people. Um, so I think that my life would have been different in a lot of ways, but I think that I got a lot of really meaningful experience out of growing up female, growing up questioning my gender, questioning things about society, and eventually making the discovery that I was trans and then transitioning. So I'm actually grateful that I didn't transition earlier, even though I think it would have been great to transition earlier, if that makes any sense. Uh, which leads to the next question. How do you think... Um, no, sorry. What do you feel like you missed out on most in childhood if you had tr transitioned later? I did transition later. For those of you who have not met me in real life, I came out when I was 34, which was 2014, and I started testosterone November 7th of 2014. Um, just earlier... No, a week ago was the fifth anniversary of my name day. March 25th, I had my court date to actually legally become Nicholas and have my, my name changed. So it's only been five years, really, five and a half years since I've come out and started transitioning. So what do I feel like I missed out on most in childhood? Uh, probably Boy Scouts. I grew up um, going to Girl Scouts. And there are similarities, but there's also big differences. And I know that there were Boy Scout friends of mine who I was always jealous of and wish I could have been a part of that. So probably that. Maybe I might have done more sports, but I wasn't really held back from sports or anything like that because I was female. I feel like I was held back from sports more because in the 80s when I was growing up, and the early 90s, my parents were really young, and I, I we just didn't have a lot of money. And so they, it was like, that was my thing. I was, I was a scout. So I don't think that being trans really influenced that. I just think we didn't really have a ton of money for me to go out and do a whole bunch of different stuff. And that's no slight on my parents. I definitely have lived paycheck to paycheck my entire adult life, so I totally get that. That's probably it, other than maybe just some social stuff that I can't even really think of right now. In relation to all this stuff about my childhood, though, one of the things that somebody mentioned who was asking me these questions was um, they mentioned a show where a kid is like in first grade and the kid's grandparent was saying, well, they're too young to know. And I wanted to respond to that. That's a, a video that I actually tried to make recently. And I just couldn't really get my groove, uh, if you will. There's times that I really struggle with these videos. And there's times that I just go through the, the take and I don't struggle with it. That was one I struggled with. I did a couple of takes. I wasn't happy with them and I didn't post it. But there was um, a lot of feedback recently because um, like a celebrity's kid came out as trans. And the celebrity came out as in support of their child. I don't really follow this person. I don't really follow like sports and a lot of pop culture and stuff. So I don't even really know anything about this this celebrity. I just know that his child who came uh who is biologically male came out as trans or gender nonconforming or what have you and there was all this backlash about um you know the, he's too young to know that he's a girl kids don't understand this stuff or they're influenced by you know the world around them and yeah I did a whole 10 minute video on that because it's crap kids like I didn't know the word for transgender but I knew that something was different about me and most specifically I knew that I was uncomfortable and again I didn't really have the words to explain why I was uncomfortable but I knew I was uncomfortable and there were signs and some of them were heated, and some of them caused adults in my life, including teachers, anxiety, because 
again, it was the 1980s. We didn't really know what trans was. We knew what gay was, and we knew what AIDS was. And we knew that AIDS was killing gay people. And so when I was exhibiting those masculine traits as a child, I got a lot of feedback from adults like, don't be gay. Remember that God made Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. And being gay is a sin and, and all sorts of stuff. They didn't know what trans was. Or I'm sure they would have said transphobic things instead of homophobic things, which is, is great. It's a great thing to do to a child. Um, but a lot of that stuff caused me to really, like, beat up on myself and, and think that I was think that I was sick, think that I was a freak, think that something was very, very wrong with me. As I was going through puberty and really struggling with my gender identity and getting a period for the first time and watching my body change and starting to, um, you know, have hormones affect everything, I thought that I was, I was really sick and that feeling like this was really bad and wrong, aside from just the discomfort of having cramps for the first time and stuff like that, like, I thought that... Like, this should not be happening to my body, and I'm, I'm sick, and I'm a freak. And I remember there were moments that I questioned, for some reason, whether or not I was, like, um, like a sex offender. Like, something was really, really wrong with me because of how I identified and, and what that meant as far as your, your sexual orientation and your urges and stuff. Again, I felt more masculine, and it just really threw me for a loop. So, I knew that something was different about me. I knew that I was uncomfortable. I just didn't know the word for it. So, saying that kids are too young to know is, is crap. And if you actually pay attention to the child, they're letting you know in some ways that they are uncomfortable. One of the things that I hated the most was dress and appearance. So, I hated wearing feminine clothing. And I hated hated going shopping for clothing, especially for special occasions, because you're expected to wear a dress. Again, my parents, most of the time, didn't really care how I was dressing as far as t-shirts and jeans and shorts and stuff like that, but for special occasions, you are expected to dress up, and females are supposed to dress a certain way. And so that meant going shopping for, like, homecoming dresses, or younger than that, like, you know, little... I don't know, Easter outfits and stuff like that. And it was a traumatic experience. And my mom even mentioned it not too long ago. In 2012, I had a really important teacher pass away. And my, my mom said, what do you need? And I said, I want to go shopping. I want to wear a suit to John's funeral. And um, I hadn't come out yet. It was two years before I, had, I came out. But I already had a blazer and women's dress pants. And I wanted to get a shirt and a tie. And I, I told her that before the shopping uh, trip. I just said, this means a lot to me. John supported me in lots of ways, including being a more masculine, gender nonconforming female, and I want to wear a suit and a tie to his funeral. And she supported that. She totally helped me pick out you know, the right color shirt and how to pick out a tie with it. And it was a great experience. And she said afterwards, she was like, wow, you hate clothes shopping. I'm so surprised that we just had a really good experience clothes shopping. And especially with the fact that I had just lost this person. I was mourning. And I said, yeah, because we were shopping for clothes that I want to wear. And in a way that I want to present. So, yeah, that was a long uh, story in, in response to a short query. But saying that kids are too young to know, it's crap. Listen to your kids. Support your kids. If your kid wants to wear something that's not quite gender conforming, let them. Let them experiment with it. And if your kid tells you, I don't feel like I conform to the gender I was assigned at birth, have a talk with them. I, had a, I did a video about that a couple of months ago. Ask them if they have a preferred name, pronouns. Ask them if they want to go shopping for some different clothes or cut their hair or grow their hair or whatever. Just listen and let them find a way that they will be comfortable because they know what makes them uncomfortable. That's all I'm going to uh, do for this video. I'll do a response for the next couple of questions in a separate video. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following the videos. Thanks for asking some questions. I hope everybody's doing okay, and I'll talk to you next time.